Welcome to this video on EBSCOhost Basics. My name is Joe Satursky. I'm a Senior Customer Engagement Manager or Trainer for EBSCO and today we're going to be going through some uh, very simple tools for searching EBSCOhost, for narrowing or filtering a search, and then for using the content, the full text, once we find it. Let's start out here on the Choose Databases page, and this gives you a listing of all of the databases you have available to you um, via EBSCOhost. And you have quite a range. They run from Academic Search Ultimate, which is a database that indexes primarily academic journals aimed at the college or university level. And if we scroll down, it goes all the way down to Primary Search, which is a database aimed at the kindergarten through fifth grade or elementary school level. Um, both are very multidisciplinary databases in that they cover uh, just a little bit of everything. Now you also have multidisciplinary databases that are aimed at different uh, audiences or age groups as well as a number of specialized databases which focus in on one particular subject area like Rehabilitation and Sports Medicine Source or Business Source Ultimate. Now all of the searching that I'm going to be doing today, the tools, the techniques that I use, these really apply in any of these databases, so it doesn't matter which one I use to demonstrate. But I'll try to demonstrate in a couple of different databases just so you can get a feel for the difference of, in content and uh, so forth. But let's start out in Academic Search Ultimate. We can enter any of these databases by clicking on the database name and that will take us to the basic search page which is pretty basic. We have a search box and a search button. Now anything that I type in the search box I will be searching the author, the title, the abstract, the subject headings, uh, keywords, the publication name, um, just that information about the item. To begin I can just type in a few search words as I said earlier. And I'm going to start out with air power. Now notice as I type, down below we see some suggested search options. And these are based on actual searches that live searchers are doing. And if you see something here that uh, makes sense to you or it looks like, well, yes, that is what I'm really searching for, um, you can easily uh, choose one of these options. Or you can just click search and go with whatever you've typed in. But just to see how this works, let's choose air power history as an example. I'm going to click on that and that search then will be performed automatically. On this results page I have 2,260 results which is a lot to read. Now for more information on how I got to these results we can refer to the current search area or the bread box we call it at EBSCO sometimes um, and this tells me the current state of my search and we'll see that change as I make changes to the search but for now what I'm searching for is or are the words air, power, and history in a phrase. When you see that this is a Boolean phrase search, you might assume that I'm searching for the exact phrase air power history, but in fact that's not the case. I'm looking for the words air, power, and history in any order in proximity to each other. In other words, in the same phrase, not as a phrase. So from these results, they are ranked by relevance, so I'm likely to find very relevant content the content I'm looking for I'm on this first page of results and one way that we we uh, calculate relevance is whether or not my search terms appear in the subject headings and subject headings are very important uh, you might not think about them much but when I'm searching for the words air power and history I'm just searching for those words I'm not searching for the concept of air power or the concept of history with subject headings some human being has actually read this article and said yes this article is about air power and so I'm going to make that a subject so it's very relevant. So I might find or I could very well find what I'm looking for here on the first page but I'm probably going to want to filter this or narrow it down a little bit and I have several choices here on the left hand side of the screen. Now the first thing I always like to do is to limit the full text. Now these are full text databases primarily that we're looking at, but that doesn't mean that everything in the database is available in full text just one click away. Most of the content is, but now I know I'm just looking for things that I can access immediately from my computer. And it did narrow that result down a bit. 
Now scrolling down, you have a number of other options for filtering or narrowing this result. I'm not going to go into all of them today, but there are two that I want to point out because I think there's a, a two-step process that seems to work really well in getting you to what you're actually looking for. And the first question that you have to ask is, what kind of information am I looking for? Now, these databases uh, typically have a mix of content. You know, here in the academic database, as I said, it's mostly academic journals, but there's also conference papers, a smattering of magazines and newspapers. So are you looking for academic content or are you looking for magazine content, something that's um, more popular and not as scholarly? Easy, uh, easy question to ask yourself, um, easy decision to make. But let's say we're looking for that academic journal content. And so already I've narrowed this down to 922 articles. The second step would be to limit by those subject terms themselves. Remember, that means a person has read this article and said that's what that article's about. And here in academic search, you actually have two options for filtering or limiting by subject. Um, most databases don't have two options. Academic search does. It's a little bit different in that way. But just to explain the difference between the two of them, the thesaurus term, this comes from a defined list of terms that indexers use to describe articles. So this is a defined term that's in a list, a thesaurus, that someone has picked and applied to this particular article. The subject terms can be more general. So this could include terms that were added by the uh, journal or the magazine or by the author. This could also include um, subject terms like place names or uh, names of people. Anything like that would fall under subject. Now, which one should you use? Um, I take a look at both of them at least at first, until you get used to what kind of content appears in each area, what types of terms. So take a look at both, um, see which one would be more helpful to your actual query. Now, initially, we see the top six terms, either thesaurus or subject, uh, based on order of frequency of occurrence, and these are the terms taken from my result sets, the most frequently occurring terms, an easier way to say that. If I click on show more, I'll see the top 50, once again, ranked in order of frequency of occurrence, but I click on name, and I can see them ranked alphabetically. So now I can drill down a little bit. So air power history, that's kind of a, a broad subject area. Um, you might ask yourself, or you might ask a patron, what, you know, what about air power history are you interested in? Are you interested in the uh, aeronautics and the, the hardware piece of it? Are you interested in particular historical periods, the Cold War, and so forth? Um, are you interested in more hardware fighter planes or, or fighter pilots? Um, what about air power are you really researching here? You may have noticed there's another option, air power as a subject heading. So if you want to get rid of all of those extraneous articles that might have the words air and power and history in them, but which aren't exactly about air power, it could be about the power of air conditioners through history. See, that would be a match because it has those three words. But if you wanted to limit to just those things that you know are about air power, let's throw in air warfare too. You can select the appropriate subject headings an update. And so this is going to narrow down even further. Now I'm down to 168 items, um, more and more on point, more along the lines of what I'm really looking for. And you'll notice how my bread box here has changed. Now it shows that I did limit to full text, I limited the source type, and I limited to those thesaurus terms. And I could continue limiting. I could use the source of the subject headings again. Um, I get a new set of subject headings every time I limit, new set of subjects. I can also use some of these other limiters like publication, publisher, language, and so forth, but we won't do that today. So that's really the basics of uh, searching. You can start out with a broad concept and easily narrow it using the filtering options, or if you want to type in something very specific, you can do that as well.
Now let's talk a little bit though about what we can do with this full text once we've found it. And we have different ways of using the full text. Um, if it's something, an article that I want to just remember for later, I can add it to a folder. Notice as I add it to the folder, we see uh, I now have things in the folder. The folder's open, and it indicates here that the folder has items. We can do that from the results list if we want. If I want to see more detail about an article, I can click on the article title, and this will show me the detailed record and where my search terms appear within that record. Now I picked this article in particular for a couple of reasons. I wanted to show you a couple of things here. Um, you may have noticed these images down below. When allowed by the publisher, we can actually extract images from articles and make them separately searchable and separately available. You can actually add those to the folder too if you want as individual images. The other thing I want to show you with this article is the uh, different types of full text that we have available. Um, first there's HTML and actually in academic search there isn't as much HTML full text. You'll find a lot more of it in some of the other databases but there is some here and with the HTML though there's two things you can do that you can't do with other types of full text in EBSCOhost. You can translate it into your choice of languages. Now this is a computer doing the translation, so it's not going to be perfect, but it's usually close enough to get the gist of the article, of the content. You can also have the article read aloud to you. So if you don't have time to read it, or you want to do something else while you're listening to the article, you can even download it as an MP3 if you want to load it onto your uh, smartphone or MP3 player if you're still using uh, MP an MP3 player. I think most people have replaced those with smartphones, but either way, you can uh, download that and you actually have your choice of accents as well. Now on the right hand side, these are some of the other things we can do with this text. Now obviously we can read it, read it on the screen, we can listen to it. Um, I mentioned that we can add things to the folder if we want to save them for later, and I'll talk about the folder today too. Um, if you use Google, you can easily add this article to Google Drive. You can print it locally. You can email it to yourself or to a colleague. You can save it to a thumb drive or to your uh, computer. You can also create a permalink for the article or view the permalink. And this is another way of sharing information. Now if you wanted to share this article with a friend, uh, you could certainly email it to them. Um, you could also send them this uh, permalink and if they clicked on that, that would lead them to directly to the article. Uh, that permalink, though, is authenticated. So in order to access the content, they would have to be either on base or logged into your network to be authenticated through. Otherwise, they'd be presented with a login page. You can also share it with your Facebook friends or tweet about it or what have you. Um, but again, your Facebook friends, as with the permalink, they would only be able to access that content um, if they were, you know, within the, the local network or on base. A few other things that I skipped over here, uh, we can also um, cite that article if you want to create a citation. If you're writing a paper, you want to know, well, how do I cite an online article? Well, we'll tell you. We have the proper citation here in a number of citation formats. Or you can export those citations as well if you're using a citation manager. So that's HTML. Let's go back to the result list and take a look at the PDF for that same article. And the PDF is going to be a representation of that article as it appeared in the original print. You have all the graphics, all the formatting is all here. And you can do almost everything with the PDF that you can do with the HTML apart from the translate option or the read aloud option. But one thing that I do want to point out here is this print button, that works for HTML, but it actually won't print the PDF. Not sure why. But if you want to print out a PDF article, you'll have to use the print icon that appears within Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is what is rendering this article on my screen. Let's go back to that result list. 
and take a look at the folder. Now I've added three articles to my folder. I have to warn you though, this is my session folder. What does that mean? That means anything I put in here is going to go away at the end of this session um, unless I log into my own personal MyEBSCO host folder. And I'll show you how to create one of those. Now sometimes the session folder though, it can be useful. Um, if you don't intend to keep these articles long term, maybe you're just looking for a handful of articles that uh, you want to use for whatever reason, you want to review or you want to uh, share them with a colleague, um, rather than emailing them one at a time, you can put them into this MyEBS, or not MyEBS go host, into the session folder. And then when you're done, when you have all the articles you want, you can select everything and then email them. And then the next time you come back in to EBSCOhost, you'll have an empty folder. You can start from scratch. If you do want to save the information for later, you'll have to sign in to My EBSCO Host. And before you sign in, you will have to create an account. There's an account creation option down below. And you can either create an account using Google, up here at the top, or you can create a standard you know, username password account down below. I already have an account, so I'm not going to um, walk through that account creation process. So let's just back up a little bit. And I will go ahead and sign in. And once I've signed in, see I'm in Joe's folder, the little My Banner up here above. And now this information will be saved. And anytime I come back to EBSCO host, and it can be uh, just about any EBSCO host database or interface, certainly any database in EBSCO host, um, these articles will be there and I can keep them for posterity. So that's the folder. And that's a really quick and simple look at searching. I do want to try a search in a different database though, just to get an idea for the differences in content, as I said earlier. And to do that, I can change between databases by clicking on the Choose Databases link up at the top. You can see I have Academic Search selected. I can deselect that here. And let's take a look at Middle Search Plus. So Middle Search Plus is a, another multidisciplinary database aimed at the middle school grades, six through eight. And now I've tried this search before. I know that I'm not going to get a lot on air power history in this database, but notice that it does remember my search from before, which is kind of handy. But I'm going to try something different here and really just to get a, a feel for the differences in content. outer space, you see all the options down below. And as with the search I did in academic search, I'm looking for the words outer and space in the same phrase in either order. But because of that relevance ranking and the subject headings, I will be getting some very relevant content near the top. And notice that this is now, uh, this information is now coming from like Newsweek, um, Scholastic Action, Canadian Geographic, um, not academic journals, wacky but true, um, definitely not an academic journal, but uh, magazines more appropriate to middle school. But I can walk through those same steps to uh, limit or filter this. I can limit the full text. Oops. I can limit by source type, say I want magazine content in this instance. And I could limit by subject. Notice we don't have the option for the uh, subject terms thesaurus. That only appears in the more academic databases. But just as before, if I click on show more, it shows me the most frequently occurring search terms within my results. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sometimes I click the wrong thing. Let's try that again. Show more, I meant to click name to rank those uh, alphabetically. And now I can say, well, outer space, that's a big topic. Let's narrow that down a little bit. What are we really interested in? Well, maybe a deep space astronomers and astronomical observations and astronomy. And we can pick and choose galaxies, anything that's from deep space. 
and then update that and get a narrower result set. So the tools work the same no matter what database you're in. You may also notice that in this database we are simultaneously searching an image database as well. So you'll find uh, in not every databases, but in some database, some databases, there will be some additional searching content appear, appearing here on the right-hand side of the screen. If I want to put one of these in my folder, now since I uh, switched between databases, but I'm still an EBSCOhost, I'm still logged into my EBSCOhost, and so we'll find that additional content from this database saved here as well. There we go, outer space underwater. All right, so that's everything that I had to talk about in this video. Um, I will be producing another video where I go into some more advanced searching tools using the advanced search page. Uh, before we leave, though, I do want to go over to EBSCO Connect. You'll find this at connect.ebsco.com. And this is a great resource if you have any questions about how to use EBSCOhost, um, how to search, how to use the folders. Um, any questions you might have are probably answered here in the form of an FAQ or a help sheet, a user guide, a tutorial. All of that content is here, and you can find it by typing in a few keywords and clicking search. So thank you for viewing the video. Um, I hope you learned something useful today.